Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Today I'm gonna to show you a quick little video on how to correctly wire a table lamp. Now you may go, duh, there's just not much to it. How wrong can it go? Pretty wrong. There's a little thing you gotta take into account called polarity, and I'm gonna show you how to get it right so it's done quickly and safe. Stay tuned. Well, if you're like me, you like to actually repair some of the things that are around your house. And from time to time, these lamps wear out. The rotary switch in them, if it's a switch type like this lamp is, just over a period of time, finally wears out and gives up the ghost. And at that time, you can either pitch it in the garbage or you can do something cool and repair it and give it a second life. But do you know that most people don't know that lamp cord has polarity. What is polarity? Well, polarity is what side is the hot or is energized, and what side is the return loop of the circuit, the neutral. And lamp cord has polarity. Now you can find it really easily because there's a little tactile marker on the lamp cord itself. If you rub your thumb across the cord, you'll see that one side is smooth and the other side has a little rib or ridge that's been molded into the covering. The side that has the ridge is the neutral and the side that is smooth is the hot. So why does polarity matter? After all, on a device like a lamp, if you turn it on and the light comes on, everything's good, right? Kinda. Here's the problem, envision this. If you have a, a device in your house, let's suppose it's an air conditioner or a washing machine, and you have wired it so that the power runs through the whole device, and the last place that it stops at is the switch, either turning on the air conditioner or turning on the washer, and then when you turn that on, everything happens. That means the whole device is energized and it's possible that you can ground to it or you become the switch, which is a really unpleasant circumstance. The way that's solved is making sure the polarity is correct, that the hot side, the energy size of the circuit goes to the switch first, and then once the switch is turned on, electricity flows through the device, in this case, the threaded base and the light bulb itself, then out and completes the circuit. And risk of you actually taking in a current is greatly minimized. So let me show you how that actually works and how to correctly wire that when it comes to wiring a lamp or rewiring a lamp. All right, so let's suppose that this is your lamp right here that you need to repair. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is remove the harp, which supports the lampshade. And that's done by moving up these two retainers right here. You're just gonna move them up, squeeze this together, and when you do so, now you're left with the base, the retainer that holds that, as well as the lamp base where the threads and everything that hold the bulb and the terminals inside are here. The first thing you're gonna do is loosen this up right here. There's a set screw. You're gonna to start to undo this. If you need to give a little bit of slack with the cordage from down below, you can usually push that up through the bottom of the base of the lamp stand. And now you're ready to undo this. Of course, what I do is I remove the light bulb right at the beginning also, so it's not in danger of getting broken as we service it. So the first thing you can see here in this shot is that I've pulled the wire up through and we have un tightened or unloosened the terminals of the defective lamp base, and now we have bare wires. Of course, it go, most goes without saying, but just to be safe, make absolutely sure that you've unplugged the cord so you're not working with energized wires. Now, once you have the wires out, make sure that the underwriter's knot is intact. And you can see this underwriter's knot I've tightened it up and there's a great little diagram that most every manufacturer provides on the back of their packaging, as you can see here, that just shows you how to do the underwriter's knot. Its purpose is to assure that if the cord gets pulled, that any kind of strain is placed on the knot at the base of 
this whole holder here rather than on the terminal screws so that you don't end up with the terminals coming loose. So don't bypass that step. Make sure that you put the underwriter's knot in there. Now, you'll notice here that there are different colored terminal screws. You can see this one is brass. And brass, the protocol for electrical devices, at least in the United States, is the brass colored screws are for the hot side where the energy will flow into the device. You can see here that brass screw and the plate that it goes into, but where does it go? Well, let's rotate it on the end and you can see in the bottom of the receptacle where the threads are going to be, a isolating brown tab with the metal tab that's gonna end up contacting the bottom of the light bulb when it's screwed in. This is the first place electricity is gonna flow in. And notice that it's also the hardest to touch because it's at the bottom of the receptacle. So that's our first safety feature. So black to brass or hot to brass is the nomenclature you're gonna use or the protocol you're gonna use. Now notice here, you've got a silver screw. That silver screw, if you rotate it on the end and look at the bottom, you can see that there is a rivet that goes through the bottom of the base and now on the other side, you can see outside of the plastic tab that's hot, you're going to see that it connects to the whole threaded shell that is going to contact the outside threaded part of the bulb. That's the neutral side. And once the switch is turned on, electricity is going to flow through it, illuminate the bulb and return the circuit. Notice that that means the shell then, if you've absolutely correctly wired it, is never going to be hot or a danger of you touching something energized unless the switch is on. Now, after we've wired the lamp base correctly, as you can see here, all the wires are tightened to the terminals. Always try to get at least three quarter of a wrap around each terminal, tighten them down the firmly, and then you're gonna reassemble the whole unit back together. You'll see here that there is a cardboard sleeve that is inserted between the metal threaded part in the uh, bottom or the inside of this whole area and this outside cosmetic shell. Again, another safety feature to isolate something that could be energized and you to keep you safe. After you've reassembled everything, tightening the core down at the bottom, making sure the knots at the bottom, everything fits well in here, and you reinsert the light bulb, you can see I tested it just to make sure my work was correct, and it was the bulb illuminated just fine. And this is a three-way switch, so I ran it through to make sure that the dim, the intermediate, and the brightest all worked, and it did. Well, there you have it. Polarity is important because you want to keep people safe. And I want to give credit due to my friend Robert that I met at the recent Woodsmith workshop in Des Moines, Iowa. Robert and I had several conversations. He's another maker and craftsman, lifelong learner. And he brought up to me the idea, said, Jay, are you aware that a lot of people are not aware of polarity and that it's important to get it right? And he walked me through it and I've since used it, and I want to give a call out to him. Thanks for the great idea, Robert, and making sure that we're doing this correctly and helping us get the word out. If you found this video to be helpful, why don't you like it? And better yet, why don't you subscribe to our channel and be sure to ring the bell, because when you do, you'll get all the notifications immediately when a new video episode comes out about the home, the garden, Maggie's Kitchen, or great product reviews you can use around the home and garden. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.